Hello and welcome back. In this session, we will be discussing on the UI action. So let's start the tutorial with the code. So according to the service not docs, UI action adds button link and context menu item on the form and list layout, making the UI more interactive. Customizable and specific to the use use your activities actions and can contain script that define custom functionalities. So from this description, we can see that there's lots going on on the your actions. Your action can run on server side or client side or even both. Action can be button, menu items or link as shown in the image below. So you can see this is the context menu. These are the buttons and this are how the early related links look like. Your actions are typically configured for form view. So they, you will generally only see UI actions within a form view or for record. All right, so let's go. Let's check on the form view how the UI action looks like. Okay. So some important fields are the table field. So you can see uh, this is a form layout for the UI action. So you can see this table, this particular. In this case, uh, we have this UI action which is running on a problem table. We have shown up the update it. So when selected this specific action, uh, you will only show on updates. Okay. So if we are inserting a record, a new record for the first time, in this case, a new button, new problem, this action will not appear. Okay. So this will appear only on update activity. Then we have a client checkbox. So if we select this, we'll instruct service now to run some JavaScript on the client side as well. Then we have what do you call a UI action. This will be so on the right side uh, we can we have form button, context menu, form link, link banner button, link banner bottom button, etc. So these are the types of button which we can give on the form. We also have a condition field. So we can specify uh, specify specifically when the UI action will show. In this case, oh, we only want this to show if the current user has an ITR role and the current problem record has there is a field called RFC field is nil or does not contain any value. Okay. And finally at the very bottom we can we have the script field where we apply any server side or client side logic we would like to execute. Alright. So now let's look let's take a look on the server side action. On the server side we have access to the current object so again if we are if this was on the problem record we would have access to the current problem record fields okay we also have access to the uh, so again if uh, so we so we also have the access to glide record and glide system apis and really any server side api we can use over here okay it's not an issue uh, again we will discuss more on this api part in the later course Server so side actions are generally the default behavior. So, uh, by default, the client checkbox will be unchecked all the time. Okay. So, in order to specify a UI action to be on client side, you actually need to select the client side checkbox. Okay. It depends on what you are doing within the specific UI action, but generally they offer better performance. Since they are on the server side as opposed to being on the client side. Okay. All right, so let's have a look on the client side action. So if you would like to would like a specific action to be a client side again, we would like to, we would make sure that the client checkbox is selected. By selecting the client checkbox, we will then see an on click function over here, on click string over here, and the on click field specifies the name of the method we would like to invoke when the when the use user either clicks on a button or link or etc whatever you can say okay so in this specific example when the user clicks on the ui action uh, that resolve incident function will be called okay you can see over here we have defined the resolve incident function will be called we can use this action that set uh, we can use the action that set redirect okay you are able to redirect the user to another page within the service now okay we can even call the other UI action on the current form by using the following syntax. So you can see there are two syntax over there. One is GSFT submit, okay, uh, which takes the gel, gel scripting. So it's a gel command and 
can specify the name of the new action. The second method is also again GSFT, but where we are fetching the um, element. Okay, it's an HTML tag, so we are just uh, getting the form element and we are passing that form element and new action name over there. Okay, and finally, if we would like to run server side and client side JavaScript, we would do so by selecting the client checkbox, specifying an on click method and then recreating the on click function. So the order of operations and the scenario would be first. Uh, first when the user clicks on the UI action so uh, what it will do the client side code will be run for the uh, run and for the server side we can define a function okay so we will either call this uh, uh, we have a function over here we'll check when the, when the type of, of window is undefined so we can uh, clearly state that when type of window is not a browser that means it's the code is for running on a server side okay that time we can define and another function which will run on a server side okay so we will look today we will be looking into three use cases i am trying to get different use cases in, in this aspect so we'll be looking into three ui actions one is close incident one is create change and third one is reopen incident so let's move to the demo part now. Welcome to the ServiceNow instance again. So as you are quite familiar now, this is how the home page of the ServiceNow looks like. So today we'll look, we are looking into the UI actions, right? So you can navigate to the UI action again with the two methods. One in the Fiddler Navigator, you can simply type UI actions. Okay, and under system definition, you can see the UI action. This is the first method, and the second method is like we you can go to the incident form, or as for example, I will take the incident. So, if you go to the list view or the form view of the form, uh, you can simply right click, and from the context menu under configure, you can see the UI action. Okay, so for today's demo, have, as I have already discussed, we will be looking into the three different UI actions. Okay, so let's go on all the UI actions one by one. Okay, so let's move for the close incident one first. So I will open the other ones also in this consecutive tabs. Okay. So it's getting loaded. So you can see the first UI action is close incident. As you can see, the table name is defined as incident. So we want to see this particular UI action on incident table. And uh, there's action name, which uh, which is close incident. Okay, it gets auto generated. It's currently true. So this particular UI action is a form button kind of UI action. So you can see on the form button, like the buttons you can see over here, right? Update, delete. In the similar fashion, you will see this UI action. And what it does, we have defined a condition field. So when this particular UI action will run, when a person ha will call the script include the script and there is a function can close incident. Okay. So this function defines whether a particular user has an authority to close an incident or not. Okay. So based on that, if this condition is satisfied, then the script will execute. And what the script is doing? It, this script is a uh, normal script which is used to close an record okay so don't worry about the scripting part we will as i told you in the past also we will be coming into this scripting topics in the coming tutorials okay so this is clear the second the second one is we will take the create change one so create change um is a context menu you can see the form context menu so what is the form context menu so form context menu is from here this how all the form context menu okay when you right click on the banner so this particular UI action is on the ticket table it's active insert and you can see in the previous UI action this particular UI action was visible only on on the update okay so it, it, this will not be visible on new record but create change will be uh, available on new record as well as when we try to update a record okay so this particular action uh, will be its a uh, form context menu as i already told it has a condition that this particular button uh, context menu 
should be visible when a user has this role okay i either idl or sn change right role and in the script part what we are doing we are simply creating a change out of a, out of the ticket okay let's move to the third one so the third one is reopen and this special kind of view action so reopen it's again on the incident table it's active to and you can see now this particular view action is show update and we have given here client so it's servo plus client callable view action and whenever we click this on click on client button okay uh, as i discussed in the past that if you will get on click string field and here we have to define the function which you want to call when a client side which will contain the client side code okay the condition is quite simple key whenever you satisfy the condition to reopen the incident this button will be visible and now as soon as a user clicks on a button so it will call the first client set function so it's reopen incident so you can see there's a function called reopen incident so this part will get executed on the client side okay once this is done then we have another syntax that if type of is windows means now we are away from the browser okay and the code is executing on the server side we are on a server side the control is on a server side then we can define another function called right now oh yeah you can see the server reopen and this will execute on the server side then okay so i hope this is clear for now Okay. Um, let's see you in the next tutorial then. Have a good day. Bye.